I'll try to explain what this program is all about and how it came about <coughs> and how it belongs in the framework of Cliver. So we all know what Cliver is and I just copied from the website both the logo and the, and the, and the uh, vision and objectives of Cliver. And I highlighted a few words here. So Cliver is about climate and the oceans, right? But it, they also added recently these very important words, words to clarify that Cliver deals with variability, predictability, and change. So Cliver is, is if you read the, the mission and you read the objectives, especially um, as, it's, as it's stated here in, in, in the board letters, it's to, to describe, understand the dynamics of the couple system, to identify processes responsible for climate variability, change, and predictability. Uh, there are different timescales that it deals with, but in this case, we are talking about the decadal timescale. And it will do that, or does that, through collection and analysis of observations and the development and application of models of the coupled climate system. And highlighted here by the underlining, which is all my, my highlighting, uh, because I wanted it to be relevant to this group, is the cooperation with other relevant climate research and ob observing activities, meaning WCRP, other projects, because Cliver is a WCRP project, WCRP has four projects, and uh, also with outside of uh, WCRP, like uh, Pages, for example, which is uh, now, nowadays outside of WCRP. So, if we look at the new organizational structure of Cliver, you can see here two, two columns. One column is the core panels of Cliver, and the other one is called research foresight. And uh, what's the idea behind this new relatively new structure is that there are different uh, core panels that deal with either specific tasks like uh, develop, uh, model de ocean model development, uh, global synthesis and observation panel, mostly of the ocean, and uh, what is now called climate dynamics panel. And we have here the chair, the co-chair of, yeah, Matt Collins is uh, the co-chair with the... To right. Uh, so it's a new panel that uh, was, uh, people very excitedly accepted it last year in The Hague. And then there are actually geographically de uh, def uh, defined panels, uh, Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, uh, what is it called? Indian Ocean and uh, Southern Ocean. And I think um, the Indian Ocean, I don't know where the monsoon fits here. Maybe. Uh, GWEX. GWEX. Oh, monsoon panel. Yeah. In the past, we have uh, three panels for monsoon Asian, Australian monsoon, oh, African right. monsoon, and uh, American monsoon. Right. Now merged into right. Clara and GWEX joint monsoon panel. Right, and GWEX because GWEX deals with the hydrological cycle, energy, energy cycle of the land. So Cliver is doing ocean, GWEX is doing as if you can separate these things. Anyway. But let's get to the research for size. So uh, Cliver decided to have cross-cutting panels. Uh, so that they, uh, uh, not cross-cutting panels, sorry, cross-cutting activities defined as research for size. And those are coming to cut across the panel. So it's like a matrix type arrangement, which is really important because decadal variability, for example, which we, we are trying to uh, represent here from both sides of Cliver and, and, and uh, WCRP, is um, an activity that cuts across the different, uh, the different panels here because it deals almost with uh, the effect of the Atlantic, the effect of the Pacific, the dynamics and all these things. So that's the reason why Cliver decided to have this cross-cutting activity and DCVP is, if you just take the, the first letters of all, of all the names here, of all the words here, then th that makes DCVP and that's what DCVP is. So, Cliver decided to do that last year, and um, what they wanted from these cross-cutting activities to do is to define specific problems that the uh, cross-cutting act activities will deal with in the, in the near future, something like three or five years, 
that are, uh, as, I, as I say, um, maybe I'll go one slide forward. No, I didn't, I didn't maintain that slide. So uh, activities that, that are uh, interesting to the entire community that are um, uh, ready for, for being uh, addressed and that we can achieve some progress in those activities over the time span of three to five years. And um, th that's what we have a discussion. They had a discussion last year um, in, in The Hague and uh, we came out not accidentally with those two uh, ma major uh, activities within DCVP that we will deal with. And those are uh, strongly overlapping components C. So we had the, the uh, already knowledge of what DCPP is, is trying to do under component C. Uh, and uh, we both converged uh, from all the ideas that came up in that meeting DCP, DCPP component C and DCVP agreed on two themes which were already discussed here and I'll go over in, in a minute. But the overall, the major objective of uh, the, the CLIVA cross-cutting activity on decadal climate variability and predictability is listed here, is to seek to characterize multi-year to decadal variability of the climate system in response to internal interactions and natural and anthropogenic forcing to determine and understand the underlying phenomena and mechanisms through diagnostic analysis, modeling, and to assess the, and subsequently harness the predictability of decadal climate variability and determine its consequences and impacts. Harness meaning using it for society. So this is the influx, this whole thing, because every time I look at it, some words change here and there. But uh, this is the, you get the general gist. It's a cross-cutting activity across Cliver panels, so it's an internal Cliver, Cliver initiative. And it's not surprising that it reaches out and tries to collaborate or co cooperate with the DCPP, which is a, the modeling activity within GWorks. Um, I listed here a few priorities, and I mean, I, it probably no need to go through them. I mean, those presentations will be available anyway, and um, uh, people can look at it. it it's it's working on, on understanding and improving models. It's working on uh, capturing uh, these things in model simulations. Um, it includes observation, uh, uh, addressing the issue of observations, particularly in the ocean, if we are missing observations, and so on. Um, so the two research fossa, as I said before, uh, that we decided on are completely overlapping the research fossa of DCPP. Um, and you'll see the consequences of that in a minute. Anyway, um, it's to, um, oh, so the, okay, that's the definition of the, of the why, what we were looking at the research foresight, which I already stated before, and the two research foresight are decadal modulations, slowdown and acceleration of the long-term anthropogenic climate trend, in other words, decadal variability in the climate system, um, and the other one is the role of volcanic eruptions in decadal climate variability and their impact on decadal climate prediction. Yeah. yeah. What about the, like low frequency variability of M <coughs> not related to anthropogenic, or, but it's very important to figure out. Uh, there was a, okay. There was a discussion on what to choose. So why do you put anthropogenic in there specifically? What? Say that again. Why is anthropogenic there specifically? I mean, there, there are things like M which vary on a decadal time scale. Uh, that was as a result of the discussion that went in the Hague. So we. This is a bit specific issue, well, as you know, is addressed in the ENSO research focus. So there are overlapping okay. issues. So, so actually, actually, this is a very general term here, okay? And if the Pacific has. A, the, the whole idea behind those research for is to cut across the Cliver panels to see what their activities are and how those are relevant to understanding this general. Over, overarching theme. And if ENSO is included in that, it's gonna be addressed through that. So we were looking for the most general way of describing both interest in, in ENSO, interest in the Atlantic, interest in what's happening over land, like uh, what's the impact on the monsoon systems, and everything is included within that. So, so the last, last sentence is very restrictive. What? The last sentence of the first bullet makes it very restrictive in a way. So let's do the whole. But that's, that's, 
that's not the meaning of, the meaning is to identify themes that can be addressed, whatever is included under them. Um, so, I mean, I listed here all, all what we mean under those things, you know, tentatively all the questions that come up within, within those two uh, uh, research foci in Clive. So, the activities that we are involved in right now, is since it's a, it's a, new, it's a new activity, it, it was, it, you know, this, we wrote a prospectus, it went to the SSG within Clive, and Clive endorsed this and other two research foci to go ahead. And, and go ahead, meaning doing these following thing, things. One of them is to put together a working group. The other one, the other one is to collaborate with the DCPP on designing component C. Um, prepare a uh, workshop of the, the first workshop that will put together the bring together a community that is interested in in that issue, and that's going to be in in. A, ICTP in Trieste in the fall. We are still working on it the. Like it was last year. Well, it's this year. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. I live in the past. What can I do? Yes. And and um, and so on. You know, uh, and, and especially important is to bridge across the the different uh, regional panels within Clivar to find out the themes that are common to all of them on decadal timescales and to, to monitor, to coordinate with those things. Um, and also uh, to reach out to WCRP projects. And one outreach is already happening and that's the, out, the connection with DCPP. Um, and I'll say, something, uh, I'll say something at the end about, about this whole WCRP uh, prospect, perspective. Um, Please approach the end. Hmm? It's the end. Oh. Don't worry about it. <laughs> this is a decadal project. Um, so this, this is the working group, and if you look through the names, you will see that there's a big overlap between DCPP and DCVP already in the membership of the group. Um, so the names include people who are interested in the problem of decadal variability, and are actively dealing with that problem, problem either through observations, analysis, or modeling. Um, so the last slide in my talk is this slide that um, whether it's called DCVP or whatever it's called, there is now a, a, a this serious discussion on making this a decadal variability, decadal climate variability and predictability, a WCRP grant challenge. That involves some advantages and some disadvantages, especially from the point of view of Cliver, because one of the reasons that Cliver wanted this kind of a focus is to bridge, to, to have a cross-cutting activity within Cliver. And so it's a major, it's a point of major debate. Uh, within the management of these programs right now. So I hope this clarified the reason why we have these two names, that, but they are very close to one another because they both deal with decadal climate variability. So. And they're both in WCRP. And they're both within WCRP, whatever you call it. Okay. Any final questions or comments? Yes. I, I didn't understand your... Can you tell me about the consequences of becoming I, is that, what, is, what is the problem? There is, <laughs> I, I don't want to get into problems. There is, whatever you can see in the, uh, tel, you, you can see whether it's a problem or it's an advantage. What is the problem? From point of view of Cliver, in my opinion, Cliver is losing a cross-cutting activity that can help it work more efficiently. Oh, it has to be one or the other. Yeah, so it's a challenge. It, it kind of like, goes beyond Cliver and, and how does it work within Cliver? I mean, this is all a question of how you manage these big programs globally. <laughs>